Welcome to Nuclear Learning, an online initiative produced by the Stimson Center to facilitate the study of South Asia's nuclear trajectories. Our first open online course, Nuclear South Asia, is available free of charge at nuclearlearning.org. This video is part of a special series on deterrence and North Korea and features Jenny Town, a research analyst at the Stimson Center and managing editor and producer of 38 North. We discuss how conventional and nuclear deterrence interact on the Korean Peninsula. In terms of conventional deterrence versus nuclear deterrence on the Korean Peninsula, again, I think it's one of those areas where North Korea's nuclear capabilities gives them the security assurances that they feel they need against a hostile you know, U.S. actor. Um, and in order to go down that um, denuclearization road, you know, a lot of improvements have to be made and a lot of kind of fundamental changes need to be made in the political relationship between um, the U.S. and North Korea, as well as, you know, the two Koreas themselves. And so part of that process would also have to be dealing with the conventional forces as well, and especially, um, you know, the, the um, forward-facing military um, standoff. And so I think there's a certain degree to which if you can find a solution, you know, to the nuclear issue, you will by default also um, be dealing with the conventional forces as well in the standoff because you would have to create, um, you know, the peace regime, you would have to end the Korean War, you would have to deal with the issue of, um, you know, the, the military relationship between the two Koreas and between the U.S. and the two Koreas as well as part of that process. And so these things are very tied together um, and finding solutions, you know, will have to be a comprehensive look at the situation and not in isolation of each other.